Hey guys, here we have an example where we're solving a quadratic equation. This equation looks pretty nice. It's already um, set equal to zero, and that's usually the first step. Well, after recognizing it's an equation, a polynomial equation that we want to solve, and this one happens to be a quadratic trinomial, learn the words. When you have words for things, it makes it easier for you to distinguish between different things. So fun fact, um, different cultures have no words or very few words to describe certain colors. And for those people, it's very hard for them to see the differences in those colors. So in America, we don't have a million words for the different shades of green taught to us. And green is green, right? But in other cultures where it really matters and they have a lot of words for the different shades, they can distinguish by looking that there are different shades of green in an image. Apply that to the math, learn the words, apply the words and it helps you distinguish between different types of equations, different types of problems, equations, expressions, and what to do with them. But I digress. Let's continue. So when you're solving a quadratic equation or any polynomial for that matter, what you want to do is get it equal to zero first and that looks like it's done for us already. Wonderful. The next thing we want to do is I would try to solve by factoring. I look at this one and it screams to me factoring method five, which is the AC method and grouping. You might know it by a different name. This is what I call it. So factoring method five, which is our AC method with grouping. Now, if you are solving and you're like, I'm not great at the AC method. Fun fact, quadratic formula will work every time for a quadratic. The problem is you still need to know how to factor a quadratic because there are going to be cases where you'll have a quadratic expression and the directions are not to solve, but they are to just factor, that's it. And solving is gonna find the X values for you, but factoring is getting it in those parentheses. Can you work backwards? Sure, but let's not make things crazy here, okay? So when it's the AC method with grouping, we need to realize that this is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals our happy zero, right? We love it equal to zero. This stuff only applies when it's equal to zero. From here, what is a, b, and c in this particular problem? Negatives carry with, right? So the a is two. The x doesn't go with it. Stop doing that. Knock it off. The b value is negative 10, and the c value is three. So what we'll do to start is you're gonna take the product of A times C, in this case, six, positive six, the sign does matter. We're gonna list off things that multiply to give us that, starting at one, go down the list, two times three, that's it, out of numbers. And then at the bottom of the list, B for bottom, we check our B value, negative 10, and we say to ourselves, okay, self, is there a way I could take one of these pairs of numbers, in this case, and add or subtract them in such a way that I would get negative 10? The answer is absolutely not. That means it's probably not factorable. Unless you messed up, it's not factorable. Another backup plan to check if something is factorable, if you're not sure, especially when there's a lot of factors and you're on the struggle bus there, um, and you're like, oh man, you know, my AC was 120, I'm gonna be here all day. You can check the value of B squared minus four AC. This is also known as what we call the discriminant of the quadratic formula or the radicand in the quadratic formula. Discriminant is a specific name for specifically b squared minus 4ac. Radicand is more of a general word we use to describe anything under a radical. So if b squared minus 4ac is equal to a perfect square, okay, think 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, yada, yada, that means it's factorable. But you made it that far, maybe just finish with quadratic formula, okay? So if it's a perfect square, you can factor it. But anything else, and there's only so many perfect squares. I mean, there's an infinite amount, but we could argue there's infinitely more non-perfect squares, I suppose, a larger infinity. Um, that means you would use quadratic formula. We're already part of the way done. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go. Make sure you know the quadratic formula, even if you're given it every single time, you should know it, right? If you have a surgeon, you don't want them to have to look things up every single time, right? Be familiar with it. Sure, double check, be safe, thanks, but you should know it. So we got negative b plus and minus the square root, b squared minus 4ac 
all over 2a. Now, I started doing this and I forgot what I was doing. b squared minus 4ac, b is negative 10. I promise you, b squared is always positive because you should always put parentheses around it. I promise you, if you ever get a negative for your b squared, you're wrong, okay? Especially if you're one of those people that just like, do, 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 I'm gonna type in the calculator. You're getting the wrong answer, okay? You gotta use the parentheses, please, and thank you. Minus four AC, well, I already did AC, it's six. Negative 10 squared is 100 <clears throat> minus 24. 100 minus 24 is 76, not a perfect square. That means we can't factor it, right? So this is not equal to a perfect square. My symbol for perfect square is a square. Um, it's not a perfect square, so we have to use quadratic formula. We're part of the way done, so let's continue. X equals, another word for negative in math is opposite. So opposite of B is positive 10, both plus and minus. We're doing two equations in one. The square root of B squared minus 4AC, well, I already did it over here. So really I have 76 underneath my radical, all over two times A. A is two, two times two is four. Now, guys, <clears throat> you can't start reducing right now. You absolutely cannot start reducing right now. Don't start reducing, that's not a thing. That's a you thing, you made that up. That's not a thing, please don't do it. You wanna simplify the radical first. You wanna have something in front and it's gotta knock out from all three places at the same time. If you can't do that, <clears throat> just leave it alone. Now, how do you simplify a radical, you may ask? Well, let's talk about that. <clears throat> What's the breakdown of 76? What is the prime factorization of 76? Well, it's definitely even, right? If I know that 80 is two times 40, well then 78 is two times 39. So 76 is two times 38. 38 ends with an eight, it's also even. Two times what? Well, I know that 40 is two times 20. So 38 is two times 19, and 19 is prime. That means that, I'm just gonna be a smidge lazy. In this radical, I'm dealing with two times two times 19. <clears throat> it takes a pair to make a square. This box is, pardon the ratios, but it's a two by two your elementary school multiplication sign, it's a two by two square. A square has the same length on the length and the width. It's the same in both directions. What is the area of this square or how many little squares is this made up of? Four, hence four is a perfect square. So a two by two makes a perfect square. What is the root of that square? What is the root? Where does it come from? Two by two, <clears throat> from two. So what do I write down next? Well, we're gonna write 10 plus minus, the two comes out, two radical 19 all over four. There we go, sorry, make my little cloud of side work over there, okay. So that's where we are at the moment. Now, there we go, how's that? All right, so now just to kinda Finish it up just a smidge more. <clears throat> this is what I was saying. It's gotta knock out from all of these places. The thing in the radical, think of it being protected in this little force field, protective shelter, underground bunker, all right? So what am I gonna get for this next thing? I'm gonna knock out a two from everybody. It's sort of like that pretzel situation we did in an earlier unit. So X equals, here's my two answers in one. If I knock a two out of everything, this is five, plus minus, that becomes a one. Do you write it? I mean, you can if it makes you happy. We don't have to. 19 over two. You can't add the five and one. You can't subtract the five and one. The one is attached to the 19. Just leave it alone. So some people might leave it like this. You probably really won't see it typed like that if it were ever a multiple choice. You'd probably just see x equals five plus minus radical 19 all over two. 
So that is more of the normal looking response. So if they separated the answers, they would write five plus root 19 all over two, and then they would write five minus, oh, not 19, root 19, and five minus root 19 all over two. If you wanted to get these answers in a calculator for some reason, these are what we call exact answers. You did not round, beautiful, precise. We like a radical, a radical is actually a precise answer. However, if we wanted what we call an approximate answer where rounding will be involved, well, that means you bust out the calculator. I know it goes against what you might believe in your brain, but I promise you that's the situation. So what will we do? You would do one at a time. So five plus the square root of 19, enter. Oh, if you hit enter, sometimes it just gives you that exact answer. So you might have to hit like second answer or like approximately equal. What am I doing? Um, oh, wrong button. There we go. So nine point ba, 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 and then I'm gonna take that whole thing and divide it by two. I think it'll still give me the decimal if it's ready. Yes, so that right there is one of the answers, 4.679. If you need, we, you won't have this likely on your exams or anything like that, especially if they're non-calculator situations. So this is a squiggle equal for approximately. And then the other answer will be five minus the square root of 19. Now say you wanted to do this all in one step. If I write divided by two, well now I'm dividing by two under the radical. So we don't want that, that's wrong. So delete, delete. Say I go next to it and then I divide by two there. Still wrong because you're only dividing the radical 19 by two. So it would look more like five on the side and then radical 19 over two, also wrong. In the case of trying to use your calculator, what you would do is you were going to put a parenthesis around the entire numerator. If you wanted to insert one, you have to use the insert button. So insert a parenthesis, otherwise you'll type over everything. And then I'm gonna write divided by two. So this will give me the other answer. I'm gonna hit my little squiggle equal button, which does exist on this calculator. If you have the same one, it's under the plus sign. So right there and there you have it. And if you think about it, five is really a square root of 25. So square root of 19 is pretty close to the square root of 25. So you're gonna get a pretty close number and then divide by two, makes sense, pretty small. So the other would be approximately 0.321, I guess. So those are my two answers, but that was just a bonus add-on. You didn't need to do that, sorry. I got a little carried away. All right, so there you have it. If you got the right answer and you know how to get the right answer and you love the quadratic formula, thumbs up. If you hate it, thumbs down. Click through for the next example. We'll see an example where you actually get a negative under your radical, imaginary solutions. So buckle up and have a great day. Bye.